Welcome to our Postcast, where we discuss productivity, self-hosting, career professionalism, and innovative technology. Here to bring you the latest from the open source ecosystem and beyond is yours truly, Andrew Syriac, and with me is my co-host, Jack Moore. How are you doing today, Jack? I'm doing well over here. It's a little bit cold, as you may know, uh, but everything else is pretty good. Uh, I'm excited for today's episode. I can just say that we're fire flying right into another service. Yeah, uh, we're marching right through our service offerings. Um, Firefly 3, for some reason, seems to have picked up traction, so we want to go ahead and explore that. Um, we don't have any kind of intro um, items today, right? So so nothing really for us to, to harp on. Um, Jack, you did put something in the uh, community updates, if you want to talk about that. Sure. Re- and again, this is just another quick uh, kind of punch out there. Um, I think it's just more towards building that community and everything around it. But as I note, uh, Dollabar now has a Reddit subreddit page that's out there. So it looks like they're starting to build that out. As you can see right now, uh, they have 37 dollar bars is what they describe it. Uh, so just good to see them um, at least putting that out there and online for people to discuss problems and just kind of, it's, it's another subreddit, right? They're going to put any kind of relevant information on that subreddit. Yep. So I just joined, so we'll see, uh, (laughs) how that is. We might share some of the stuff that we've done, uh, around dollar bar on there. And, uh, I'm sure things to come as well, because, you know, having an ERP, having a, a CRM, right. Is, is actually really nice to have, right, when you're dealing with a lot of customers. Um, Which is not a problem we've run into yet. Uh, Although we did revamp our uh, goals. Uh, Every quarter we kind of go back and and, uh, revisit uh, what we've done, uh, where we stand right now, and and where we want to be going. Um, So we went through uh, what we had set up for Q4 uh, 2021. That was interesting. Jack, I was wondering if you had any big takeaways from our review of, of last quarter. You know, we're really good at developing is the one thing that I always uh, think of. We're really good at all the technical stuff. That's all we, That's kind of been a reoccurring theme, though, that I've noticed. That wasn't just limited to last quarter is what I would say. I, I don't know if anything stuck out to you um, more than that. I think the thing that stuck out most to me is the amount of effort that we spent on our engagement. <laughs> uh, I, I think I think more than anything. Uh, so we had gone through uh, our some of our pillars, um, service resiliency, instance features. Like, like Jack said, we got a lot done in there. I think that was probably our our best segment. We we just got a, we pushed out a lot of features. The the thing we, however, spent the most time on was engagement. So that would be all of our engagement with the community, um, networking with other professional groups, uh, as well as uh, putting these things together, putting videos together, um, writing blog posts, uh, me doing the, the integration session walkthroughs. So all of that uh, even doubled or tripled the amount of time that we put into the rest of uh, the, uh, the 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 rest of the, the segments that we right. had the, the the pillars the content all the content that we all the time at least we put into the content definitely surpassed as you're saying double or triple what we spent on developments for uh, our compose portal command center you know, all the branches we have, it, it's just, it, now that you say that, it was pretty amazing. It was pretty crazy how much time we spent on all of those. And it, it, it wasn't like I wasn't aware of that. Cause I, I know, you know, I'm, I'm waiting a couple days for you to, to uh, get the edited version of the podcast to me. Um, I know I'm sitting down for at least two or three days to create those integration session videos. Right. And we are doing that. I mean, that's that's where we had been putting a lot of our effort. And, and it was really easy for us to let that pile on uh, because a lot of those were just in our maintenance swim lane, right? Because right. those, those were just recurring things that we were used to uh, needing to have to do, right? Th- those were those were things that, that cropped up and, and we went through that. What I was happy with here is that, you know, we, we got a little bit of time to step back and, and, and really – 
analyze the information that we gathered, right? And and, and we did it in different types of ways, right? So so that was only uh, one measurement that we took uh, of of that pillar, you know, of that focus area. And but 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 that was one that really stood out to me, just juxtaposing that uh, against the other two, and and really how much effort was actually put into us creating all this content. And it's it's weird too. I mean, we're not a we're not trying to be people who produce content. I'm not trying to live on content. I'm not that good. Trust me. I've, I've, I've seen good content creators. I am, I'm nowhere near that. Right. So putting, putting all this effort towards that just doesn't make sense, especially when, you know, this ethical, sustainable system that we're, right. we're, we're putting together, it really should be the core focus of, of what we're doing here. Uh, so we did uh, on the heels of that. We, you know, we we just get together for for two days in a row, just just kind of marathon through a, a review and then a planning session. So we put together our Q1 2022 quarterly goals, and I'm looking at it right now, and actually put 2021 quarterly goals on that sheet. So I'm going to have to revamp update that. that. Okay. Yeah, but but we do have um, the focus areas that we we uh, changed around here. So we have we have three really we're working on here now, and we've actually separated, given that, given that, and, and this is why I love quarterly planning, because it gives us an intermediary place to just stop, right? Um, and, and just say, um, do we need to kind of move the goalposts around, right? And, and in this case, we did, right? So I wanted to segment out content creation and promotion. And actually, Jack, right. I think you came up with this, right? Right. Uh, and, right. And I think that was probably the best move uh, on, on our part that we did this quarter is, is, is to put that in its own focus area. Yeah, I think it's easy for us to just create all the content, right? And then the promotions that second half that needs to be done. Uh, and then I think along with that be, just kind of leads into the sales and networking part where it's, they're separate, right? They're definitely different things, but I think with the content you get, okay, this is all that we've created. Great. This is great. Now, how are you, what's the distribution look like? What does the promotion look like for that content? You know, and then where does that lead to, all right, someone saw the podcast. They want to reach out. They want to get to know us better. Where does this lead to eventual sales? And all of that just kind of, I don't know if I would want to call it the sales funnel uh, and be all, what, clickbaity, to, you know, <laughs> but uh, that's kind of what I think of, right? You get the content out, you promote the content, and then that leads to people reaching out, which leads to kind of sales. So that's kind of what I think of when those are discussed and at least splitting those out makes the most sense. And I know I had taken a snapshot somewhere of, of one of Jason Stapleton's kind of uh, introductions to, to some of his courses. Uh, and, and he, to his credit, puts out a lot of information uh, in, in everything he does, you know, his, especially the stuff that, that he just puts out there for free. Right. And I'm like, I'm like, I would, I would prefer that if, if I were at the point where I would need coaching or, you know, kind of in, intense, uh, engagement interaction uh, I, I think that would probably be the first place that I'd go and and, and try to hit him up on, uh, about that but just what he's putting out for for free one of the screenshots that I took was was his conception of the modern sales funnel if you will uh, it looks more like a a, a cycle a, a continuous circle sure oh, yeah. uh, and and he goes from you know people finding out about you, um, to people doing research and then you have this kind of like it's not a figure eight but it's like it loops back on itself right because people continually stay on that figuring out about you phase until they feel good enough to that they know you or that they're comfortable where, where you right. stand sure. and and you know the more that we can put out there after people you know are, are aware of us right to kind of lay out here's what i think about you know project management and here's what i think about you know uh, you know negotiation right and 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 laying that stuff out where i think the project's going can they can get behind that they can get behind that as as a you know this is this is the mantra this is what they're going to be going towards when they're interacting with me or, or or anything like that right and and really taking the time to narrow down our thoughts um, on on all these different ideas and, and, and problems really that, that we have. Um, and, and then you go into the, 
the eventual, you know, sales or support or, you know, whatever that looks like. And, sure. and even if you're an individual contributor, I mean, when you go to look up a project, when I when I was first researching back in the day, when I was first researching like Ansible and Puppet and Chef and configuration management, you know, I had just kind of learned a little bit of Python, enough Python to write um a conky script to put in the background of my my open box desktop environment, right? And it was this little widget on my environment that had a little built-in to-do list, and I wasn't super satisfied about it. And then I found Canboard, and I was like, oh, th- th- board systems are much better Perfect. than to-do yeah. lists, yeah. right? And that was kind of my personal evolution. And, and I started hosting that. And I was like, oh, what? You know, this this thing goes down all the time. You know, it requires maintenance. You got to update it, and you know, so so I started building out this this type of 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 system, right? And and one of the things I, I knew I needed was some kind of configuration management tool. So I sat down. And I was like, all right, well, what do I know? Which is already, you know, like Python and Bash and shell scripting and, and interacting with with uh, stuff like that that's that's already built into to servers. Um, and and looked at Ansible, which provided me that, you know, uh, Chef and, and Ruby, which which had their own takes on it, you know, and and one of them had a had a really rich community at the time. I I think that what was that like 2015, 2016? Um, Ruby was or um, Chef. Uh, Puppet, excuse me. Puppet was, okay, I yeah. think, the the main hotness at that time. That's really what Red Hat kind of threw all their weight behind. That was before the the, the resurgence of, of Ansible after their 2.0 update. And uh, what I I kind of got in like right before that, um, or or it was like right after right right around that 2.0 update. And I was like, this this is a thing that I'm just gonna do because it it jives with you know the Python, the Bash, the, the everything that I'm I'm familiar with. Um, but I took my sweet time doing all that research, right? I, I looked at YouTube presentations. I looked at tutorials, you know, I, I got up and running. I, I followed all the, the quick start things. And, you know, sometimes it does just come down to the, you know, this is the mental model that I have in my head of how I think things should work. Uh, therefore, you know, this is the tool that I'm going to choose. And, and most likely that's going to be your best option, right? You're going to want to follow your instincts right, there. Right. Uh, we're going to talk about instincts later on here and, and you know, how those could be potentially misleading. But uh, fo- following, following my gut at, at that point um, really did, uh, did allow me to, to move past that, that level into, okay, now I'm going to become part of the community. I'm going to really dive in. I'm, I'm, I'm sold on this product and, and that's really going to be my, my tool of choice going forward. And, and it has been, it served, served me very, very well. Oh, what's that? Camboard? Oh, for sure. I know, yeah, I know you and I love. Well, Camboard and Ansible. Yeah. And Ansible. Yeah. 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 I know you and I both love our, uh, well, and board for yes. every th- for task management yes. basically, but Ansible especially. Um, how would you say you got involved in those communities? Then let me ask you that. As I know, I know, I know you've opened your fair share of issues. I know you've done yeah uh, your fair share of digging into the platform. I didn't know if you've. I didn't. I don't want to put you on the spot here either. If you don't want to answer, you don't have to. But what would you say that contribution looks like? What would you say getting involved in that? community looks like then well for me it was always about the cool things that i've did i've always been really excited by cool things that people do right um so i think the very first thing i did with ansible outside of just you know uh, forums chat rooms etc was i gave a talk to the open source club on Ansible, how to get uh, started with it, what stuff looks like, and you know what what I had been doing with it, uh, and and really that was a learning process for me because the best way to know that you know something is to be able to teach it to present someone. Present on it, yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Present right. on it, teach it, yeah, exactly. So so that was really cool when I was able to to start giving presentations on that. I also started giving presentations at uh, Linux Fest, um, yeah. Ohio Linux Fest. And Pi Ohio, I believe I did as well. Um, maybe, maybe not. I'm not sure. E- either way, I've 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 given several diff- several different presentations on Ansible. Now, I'm not like a core contributor, right? Um, I don't know multiple languages, so I'm not an interpreter. Um, I've helped with a couple issues in the the documentation, right? I've I've followed a couple bug reports against you know various modules and stuff like yeah. that. Uh, and and I think a lot of what open source uh benefits from is 
Linus's law, which is with many eyes, all bugs are shallow, right? And I, I typically am not one to to jump to filing a bug report. And when I do, it's it's the strangest thing. You know, it's the same thing as trying to teach someone with a presentation. You go to file a bug report, and you like meticulously note down oh, right. how to reproduce it. You're like, wait a second, did I try that other thing? You go to try it, and it works, and you're like, oh, I just ah, uh, I didn't try the other uh, thing, right? <laughs> yeah. It's like you're just just laying it out in in that format, making sure that you know you are going to be presenting this to the broader, broader to someone community. else, right? Yeah, right. This is going to be something that's scrutinized, right? And and you don't want to make a fool out of yourself. So you know, totally no. Cover your no, no, rear no. on that, and and <laughs> and uh, I've I've done that. I've done that a couple times. Um, also, hang out in the the Ansible chat room. Um, on Matrix, yeah. Uh, so plug for that. Uh, they they are official there. Um, as well, I saw here. I'm don't know if I'll be attending it, but uh, Fostum 2022, uh, the European uh, convention thing is is going to be online this year, powered by Matrix. So I might I might nice. hop on that to to see how that is. But yeah, I you know any anywhere that has a has a matrix room, dollar bar included, um, I, I try to hang out in it, or at least I try to keep up with, uh, and and I think that's it, it's been really cool, um, and and just kind of helping out where I can, uh, it, even if it's you know to be that guy that asks, hey, uh, do you have any more details on that? Right when someone says, you know, something's yeah. not working, well. In what ways and to what extent is it not working? You know, and, right, and, and, right. and going through that process. It doesn't work. <laughs> um, no, okay. So that, I don't know if you have anything you want to add on to there. I was going to say, I think that covers two. If that covers two of our three, exactly for, yeah. uh, yep. this upcoming quarter. So we have, in case it's unclear, uh, <laughs> Uh, we have content as one, which we split out. We have sales and marketing, or sales and networking, yeah. which is our second, and then we have portal. So we're going to continue to bring up all of all the, all of the portal develop all the portal developments, basically to that our 4.0 for to match. Basically, our front end matches our back end. Right now, it's not, but one of the goals this quarter is to bring it to a matching level. So I'm excited for all three of those. I can tell you that uh, I think it's going to be a little bit different, especially sales and networking. Um, just because it's something different, I don't think we're gonna have. I don't issues think it's because I think we're pretty smart people, but yeah, it's just not I either of our strengths. Gonna, you know, you're right. It's just not right. It's exactly right. So there's so. there's a lot of things I do well. Uh, you know, I think I've gotten a lot better over the years at you know working in in a team. Right, I've had a lot of practice doing that. Um, working with people, kind of collaboration. Uh, I'm. I have really grown fond of creating content. This is this is really fun to do. Uh, however, it can't be everything. Otherwise, I'm right. just I'm I am not backing up my words with anything. Right. right. So right. And, and and that's what we're trying to do. You know, part of part of that whole I don't know if you call it a spiral or you know what what whatever that is that, that, that kind eight. of that kind yeah. of circle. Yeah. Is is going to be you know getting people involved and you know networking is is a really big part of that um so if you're listening to this there's a very good chance that i will actually be reaching out to you in the near future don't don't be alarmed this isn't like this isn't a pitch right i just want to i want to see how how this is going um you know where you are in life that you know this came across your radar because right? because I know Jack and I are in really similar situations, right? We're open source nerds. Um, we're we 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 both love uh, the project management type things. Yep. Right. So this this fits in very specifically to a niche that is that is actually two niches that overlap into a niche of niches, and and it's it's been pretty cool. Uh, but but I want to see you know what what are other people uh, thinking to to that extent. Uh, we will actually be looking to incorporate uh, actually interviews uh, into yeah. the podcast, not necessarily live, but as we put these out, as we publish them on the the RSS feed, uh, integrating some interviews that we would do separately, as well as release separately on our YouTube channel uh, into those as well. So so keep a lookout for those. Um, I'm actually kind of excited. I've been I've been thinking, kind of 
mulling around in my head, you know, kind of what questions to ask, who to talk to, right? I, I, I love the people who I know on, on Twitch, right? And um, contrary to popular belief, I mean, they're very uh, entrepreneurial entrepreneurial minded people. Oh yeah. Right. Uh, you know, individual content creators. I mean, you, you, you think of a content creator being someone like, you know, Linus, uh, from Linus tech tips, right. He's got an entire production team behind him. He's got a full house full of employees and computers and just, you know, all of this money to throw around. There's a lot of other people who are scraping by on Twitch who don't have that who are busting their buns to put out content to right. do community curation and to 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 figure out new ways to to get stuff out and 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 to to give people the entertainment that they're looking for and and so I I want to get kind of their story see where they are in life and see if that niche kind of matches up with the one that we've carved for ourselves um Anyways, that's a long way of saying that. That uh, I, th- I think I want to be talking to some other people, Jack. If, if as long yeah. as you don't take any offense, you know. <laughs> no, that's absolutely fine. <laughs> oh man. 